Kola joins me now uh, to bring you some of the things you've been talking about on our social media of choice, which is Expo Kola. Yes, hello again, Jeffrey. And one thing that never seems to go out of fashion as far as conversation on the internet is concerned is economic hardship. Mm. And Nigerians are talking about that this morning as well. But we start from Borono State this morning, where, of course, we have a serious humanitarian situation on our hands. Millions have been displaced. Uh, over, uh, is it 300,000 now are said to be in uh, IDP camps. Uh, but what are you saying this morning? Let's start from Emmy, who says, okay, this is specifically about 280 inmates escaping from the correctional center. Mm -hmm. And Emmy says, ha, it begins with an ex exclamation mark. How do they really manage the affairs of the country? Dangerous people like these are held in a place that could be dislodged by flood. Are we carrying out any risk assessment at all? Uh, Yaya Abba says this is scary. Uh, so all the Boko Haram inmates that are being held there have disappeared. We don't know what the, who the inmates are, but they are prisoners. Uh, and we're told that some of them are very dangerous. But the Minister of Interior has said that the situation uh, is being tackled as we speak. There's also Yaya Abba who says this is scary. So all the Boko Haram inmates that are being held there have disappeared? Well, we don't know about that. All right, Vala says... Uh, uh are we is he expected not to f are they expected not to flee i guess that's what you wanted to say even the prison staff have run for their lives mm. and uh well i guess that's it you forgot to take from patriot sentinel who says uh, just in a few words residents should look out as some people are criminally minded and that is very correct at this point in time particularly with floods receding and most structures being abandoned yeah. people may just want to take advantage of the situation okay. uh, well we go to the next talking point which is still about Meduguri and uh, this one this time around it's about flood victims being trapped on the roof of a house and Amaka e is the first person speaking and they say I'm worried about that palace that place collapsing giving the number of people standing on it uh, I think I understand that there's a video uh, a part, part of what is going on in Meduguri mm -hmm. so we'll take a look at that video yes so that's that's the situation uh, these people have found themselves as far as this issue of the flooding is concerned. Uh, so you can see literally just sitting across, just directly opposite their houses and watching nature's wrath taking its toll on their property. Uh, it's a very sad, sad scene to, to see. Uh, I think what is particular about this video is that the people we're seeing here are seated on the roof. On a rooftop. On the rooftop. And there are concerns about their weight on the rooftop. We don't know how strong this particular roof is. So that is where they found themselves, uh, just trying to uh, make the most out of the situation, just sitting there mm. and just wait to see how things play out. But whatever intervention that can be sent to them, it has to be right now, like yesterday. Uh, so let's get some of your thoughts as well, Mr. Wise. Say no human being deserves to live, live in such condition. And Adegoki says, "What the rescue? What's the rescue team doing? They should be on duty in search of many others trapped in buildings." Famous call said, "Would love to help in rescue situations as such. But realistically, how many people can swim across with it?" With the size of the water, I guess that's what we wanted to say. I encourage people to learn to swim, especially for days like these, when nature brings the pool to you. <sighs> Wise wow. words there. And this next talking point is about um, the end bad, bad governance protesters who, has, who have been granted bail to the tune of 10 million naira. Of course, the authorities must also possess properties and they must submit their passports. Very tough bail conditions. As a matter of fact, they have been charged with treason. And one of the charges is about them declaring war on the country, something to that effect. Well, the first... Uh, Send them trying to uh, unconstitutionally change government. Government. Uh, there were six charges. McDonald Mukoro says, where will the money come from? People that are hungry, will they have to protest if they have the money in the first place? Okay, life is a blessing. You say if they had 10 million, they won't be on the street to protest. And Teslim says payment of 10 million naira on protesters is just ridiculous. Taking this country back to the military days, how can a government try to silence silent protesters? So silence have, protesters. People I mean. have criticized the government of 
the judicial review will to so say this is more like uh, going around the law, <laughs> not trying to break it. Because why would these guys raise this money in the first in place? In the first place. Uh, if they had it, would it be there? So, uh, well, the law, they say it's the law. Let's see how it plays out. But uh, we need to rethink things a lot. In Absolutely. Our country. But if there's a crime committed, the person has to face uh, the courts. Uh, the next uh, talking point is about uh, the president reacting to the current petrol price hike. And this time around, he was speaking during an interactive session with Nigerians and diaspora in China, to be specific. And, uh, of course, the president says tough decisions must be made for development. Uh, Olabi Silo is the first speaker, and they say PBAT as the president should, as a matter of urgency, ameliorate this pain. Your Excellency, sir, you are not popular on the streets again. Policy, I guess, info says the hunger in the country is nothing to write home about. Everything has escalated to a higher extent. The price of items in the market is now more than average masses in the country, let alone to compare what the poor masses are witnessing in, are witnessing in this country. Federal government should take drastic decision to curb this ugly situation before it results to something else. I believe we can't say that enough. Uh, the next speaker is Sani Aminu, who says, Mr. President, stomach infrastructure is very important too. Yes, we acknowledge the fact that infrastructure is key, but only well-fed and healthy people use infrastructure. I still don't regret supporting you, but you have to soften some of your policies. I beg. Well, let's see. Uh, well, I think enough has been said to the president. He's the president of the Federal Republic, so it's, it's now his decision to make how he wants to run the country, what legacy he wants to leave behind. But we've continue, we will continue to tell him the truth of how bad the situation is, constantly saying they are difficult and all of that. Uh, but Nigerians have never seen any president in their history who had promised a better life and really give them a better life, at least in this republic. Uh, so what is different? Huge points to think about there, yes, Jeffrey. none. Everyone has increased one thing or the other. There's been one increase to the other. And they always do it to say it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. Just bear. Austerity measure and all of that. And the question is, is there a specific method to the madness? What's the strategy? <sighs> when will uh, Nigeria exit this wilderness, so to speak? Big as question for the leaders to reflect on. Yes, we'll continue to remind them. Okay, uh, that's the much we can take as far as your thoughts are concerned. We'll go on a quick break. When we come back from that break, our very first conversation, we'll take you back.